Comanchero boss Mick Murray has demanded answers from behind bars, over the mystery of a missing $200,000 seized in police raids almost a decade ago. The ex-Comanchero president, 45, has dragged Victoria police before a court to hold them accountable, over the whereabouts of cash taken from his home, his gym and his tattoo shop in 2014. Murray is demanding answers regarding the disappearance of the Dash, and has taken legal action to hold the police accountable for the missing cash, suspecting corruption. According to Murray's lawyers, prior to submitting the court application, they made multiple efforts to find the substantial sum of money. They approached the police on several occasions, seeking information, but had no luck in getting proper answers. Despite numerous inquiries, no information regarding the missing funds could be obtained. This lack of information from the police indicated their reluctance to provide the requested details and their inability to offer a satisfactory response regarding the money's whereabouts. Murray's lawyers told the court that all they got was a notice that instructed the police to hand over $20,000 to the Australian Taxation Office to settle Murray's debt, however no records indicate its delivery or the whereabouts of the remaining $183,000. The lawyers claimed that they attempted to seek a clarification on this matter, but the police were uncooperative and unresponsive. In reply to the lawyer's query, Victoria police told the court that the cash is not missing, and is instead sitting with the Australian tax office. Police told the court that after the seizure and arrests, Police were compelled to surrender the funds to the tax office in compliance with an order issued in August 2014. The court heard that the money has been held in tax office accounts since October 2014, with $20,000 credited to a debt account under Murray's name, and $183,000 in an account labeled Nitro Holdings Limited, a company that operated the Nitro gyms. Police also told the court that if they did not comply to the demands of the tax office in 2014, they would have been committing a criminal offense, all police have done is comply to the tax legislation and rules, the money has been sitting with the tax office since 2014. Police also confirmed that the matter wasn't treated as a matter of urgency as they had a murder trial to prepare for. In response to this, Murray's solicitor clarified that the cash that was seized from the gym and tattoo shop did not belong to Murray himself, but rather to the companies that operated those businesses. Therefore, these funds could not be used to offset any debts owed by Murray personally. The solicitor emphasized that the ownership of the cash rested with the respective entities, and therefore it should not be considered as part of Murray's financial obligations. The lawyer also commented that the Victoria police cannot act as debt collectors for the tax office, suggesting that the matter is more complex to what the police and tax office have assumed it to be. In 2017, Murray and his former partner Debbie Pittman were ordered to pay $3.72 million to the tax office after they were targeted by the National Anti-Gang Squad. Initially the tax case was for $10 million, however some of it was struck out after prosecutors failed to prove their case. Murray is believed to be the beneficial owner of the Nitro Gyms franchisee with headquarters in Hallam and the Nitro Inc. Tattoo Parlor in Dandenong and another company named Nitro Security. He is also believed to be the owner of Iron Kingdom Gyms. Nitro Gym in Hallam has a long history of police raids, has been the target of drive-by shootings and has been used as a meeting point on Comanchero runs. Murray is currently behind bars pending a murder trial after he was charged over the alleged 2019 execution-style shooting of gangland figure Meathat Rasimi. Murray pleaded not guilty to the charge and is awaiting trial. Upon reviewing the application presented, Magistrate McNamara at the Melbourne Magistrates Court acknowledged that the matter was intricate and not as straightforward as it seemed. This suggests that there were uncertainties and gaps in the arguments put forth by both parties involved. The magistrate informed Murray's solicitor that the application is dismissed, not because it lacked merit or substance, but due to being filed under the wrong legislation and incorrect legal procedures. The decision was based on procedural errors rather than the content of the claim itself. Murray's solicitor accepted court's decision and expressed intentions to refile the claim in order to pursue the return of the seized property. According to reports, Murray is currently attempting to secure funds that would enable him to fund a legal defense against the imminent murder charge he is facing.
it is believed that he is searching for financial resources to support his defense in order to avoid a potential life imprisonment sentence as he recognizes the seriousness of the charges against him and the potential consequences if found guilty. Murray is currently locked up at the High Security Barwin Prison since April 2022, and is awaiting trial which is due to start early next year.